Hey friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me back in my craft room today. I've got a bit of a long video because I really wanted to show these three card ideas I had for the series of, we'll call her the Enchanted Princess stamp sets from the Sassy Club. I have a bunch of other dies and stencils. I'm going to be using both of these. The slimline version is called the Cave Die and the A2 version is the Mine Die. I brought out this die for the trees and as well as a stencil, but I don't end up using them. This is the Magical School Castle stencil, but I'm going to use it in my Enchanted Ever After scene um, castle. I also have my book dies and then these really big awesome letter dies that I will use um, down the road throughout this video. In order to not have this video be three hours long, uh, before I started recording, I already stamped all of my images in my Sassy Club Onyx Black Ink, and I colored them all in with my Oh Hoo Hoo art markers, and then I used my Scan and Cut to cut out all of these images. It took me quite some time to do all those, but it was also a lot of fun. I just watched YouTube um, as well as this movie to get the coloring down right <laughs> um, on my computer while I was coloring. So we're going to start with our villain because she is queen and she is amazing. So we're going to start with our villain card and I wanted it to be kind of dark and gloomy like her lair where she makes her poison apple and so I know her enchanted mirror is like upstairs in her gigantic castle but we're going to just pretend it's all in one room for this scene. I die cut one of the kind of rock platforms from the mine die set as well as the actual A2 plate out of some gray cardstock. And I'm using two different Distress Ink colors to kind of darken up the edges of everything. I'm using Hickory Smoke and Black Soot. Um, again, these are Distress Ink, so they're die base. So just kind of creating a dark and gloomy atmosphere. And then I also die cut the mine die out of some black sparkly cardstock. Um, I just really wanted some shine to come through on this card. So on top of the black sparkle cardstock, I'm also using some metallic watercolor in a black, it's more like a dark gray, but a black color and it will dry back quite a bit, but it's going to add some really nice, fun metallic shine to these two die cuts. So I'm going to set those aside to dry and then I will start putting together kind of the background of the card. So I did trim a piece of the poison apple black and gray pattern paper from the bejeweled six by eight. No, yes, six by eight. No, six by six. I can't do math. Six by six paper pad. And I trimmed it to be slightly smaller than an A2. So that way it would just fit perfectly in the center and the edges will be hidden behind my A2 plate. I didn't want to worry about lining it up perfectly if I didn't trim it exactly right to be A2. And I'm going to do a dry run of my Evil Queen in the reflection and we're gonna pretend that she spins around and now she's this old hag. Very uh, kind of reminiscent of at least the old version of this attraction at the Southern California theme park. Um, I know they redid it recently and I've written it. I just don't remember if this scene is still there. But anyway, so I have our queen in the mirror and she's holding the poison apple and that is when I dropped the glue on my poor little hag. <laughs> but it's okay, it's liquid adhesive, I wiped it off, everything was fine. So I have my queen holding her poisoned apple in the mirror and that's gonna be behind all of my fancy um, mine scene, I, even though it's like a dungeon scene. And I'm also going to glue the rock that my old hag is sitting on. So I'm just using my magnets to help keep the glitter paper in place while I kind of figure out where all my images are going to go so I can slide them in and make sure they're in place before I glue down my die cut layers. So the background is done 
And I wanted to glue down my sparkle cardstock, but I wanted it to have a little bit of a pop. But with all those tiny little intricate die cut pieces, I just was not about to put foam adhesive behind all of that. And I also didn't really want to die cut a piece of fun foam. I just wasn't sure how it would hold up to those thin pieces. So I die cut two more of the mine die out of some white cardstock. This is just some really cheap white cardstock that I don't like using, so it's perfect for layering. And I'm lining them up behind the sparkle cardstock, making sure to get all of those little intricate pieces lined up and the glue wiped off any excess. And then I will glue this to my card base. Once I get it completely covered with glue, I'm gluing that right down. Again, it's going to overlap with my mirror scene. It's going to overlap where my old hag is going to be standing, that little rock there on the bottom platform, I guess you could say. And now for the gray, the watercolor is dry now, and I'm actually rotating it 180 degrees and gluing that down to the card base. Now there were a few of the little pieces um, of my mind dye that were kind of sticking out not really gluing to anything so I add a little bit more glue and I'm just using pressure from my magnets or my fingers to glue those little pieces down to the background. They won't be popped up like the rest but I still think it looks really cool. Once I have all of that glued down, it's time to add my scary hag here and I'm going to pop her up. So I'm going to use some foam adhesive, cover her up and then pull off all of the release paper and gluing her down on top of that platform, kind of overlapping with the mirror a little bit. Now I had originally intended for this poison apple to be on the front as well when I was kind of planning this card out in my head, but I just couldn't find a place that I loved it without covering a ton of the sparkle cardstock. And I didn't want to cover a ton of the sparkle cardstock. So my sentiment is cut from a strip die, I believe from Lawn Fawn. And I stamped it with some purple ink I believe. Yes, this is a VersaFine Claire Monarch and uh, I'm just going to glue that to the top. It says your, uh, your one bad apple and I'm going to trim off the excess part of that banner and then I'll go ahead and put my poison apple on the inside of the card. I just didn't want to block any of that shiny glitter paper because it's not it's not the same as my cheap white paper that I just, you know, do whatever with. I want my sparkle cardstock to shine because it was more expensive. <laughs> so this will be a final look at this first villain card. I hope you love it. It was really fun to put together. And I did, like I said, I watched the movie to see what the poison apple looked like and I colored it. I, in my memory, I don't remember it being like that teal and black, but very cool looking. So that's why my poison apple is colored that way. Now we're jumping into the slimline card featuring our seven little friends here. Um, like I said, it took a long time to color these guys in, but I, I'm very happy with how this card turns out. So it was definitely worth it. And for this one, I use the, um, cave die, I believe. So it's very similar to the mine, but this one is in a slimline format. And there's also three kind of like openings you could also die cut. So there's four dies in this set. So I die cut the plate out of two pieces of craft cardstock. And then I die cut a the holes. I line them up with the plate out of some craft cardstock as well that was trimmed down to be slightly smaller than eight and a half by three and a half. And I added a bunch of distress ink to that background. I started with vintage photo because I wanted it to be slightly darker than the craft cardstock. And then I went in with ground espresso and black soot to darken up the cave openings in the background as well as a little bit on the bottom just to create a little bit more shadow. And I trimmed down a piece of the 4x9 slimline paper pad to fit behind my background. Again, my slimline card will end up measuring 3.5 by 8.5, so I just trimmed it to be a little smaller so I wouldn't have to worry about lining everything up. I'm adding a little bit more of the Vintage Photo Distress ink to the cover plate die 
cut out of the craft card stock and now we can start layering those together. So I did, like I said, I cut two out just so I could have some stability and thickness in my scene. I'm going to layer those up together. Those really cute little, I forget what they're called. Is it staglomite? Am I saying that correctly? I know the C is for ceiling and the G is for ground, but I couldn't tell you what the words are. <laughs> I should have googled them before I started recording. But anyway, I have my scene and I just feel like there's a lot more depth because of the distress ink. But before I glue my background together, I want to get my sentiment stamped. It's going to fit just perfectly in that little open area on my background. So I'm going to use my Misty to help me get that stamped well. And I'm going to use another Versifying Clear ink, but this time I'm going to use pine cone, which is a nice round color and I'm going to stamp it twice to make sure it has a really good coverage and that will be my sentiment for this card. I'm going to go ahead and layer everything together. I just want to make sure my gems are coming through that background just how I want them. So gluing the craft cardstock with the cave openings to the gem pattern paper and then gluing my cave scene uh, right to the cover of that and that will be the background of my card Now that the background is done, we're going to move on to the foreground I guess you could say I'm going to start adding in all of those images I'm going to start with tucking in some of those gemstones around my background before it completely dries So adding some liquid adhesive and just sliding it in between those two layers within my cave I do I think eight total. I try to do two of every color. I colored um Three of every color so you'll see the extra gems I'm gonna glue those to the inside of my card later I also colored in this little bag of gems and a few of these pickaxes so I put those more in the corner of the card and then I'm gonna line up all seven of my little friends here and it takes me a little time to figure out a good layout but once I do I start with my little friend on the left the one on the right the one in the middle and then I do the two in between so all seven plus it, it looks centered because I've got that um, bag of gems there but uh, you'll you'll you saw how I layered everything together uh, to make it as even as possible and then I glued that to my eight and a half by three and a half card base and now just adding in those final little gem touches on the inside of the card this it turned out so cute. I did forget to add the highlights, but you'll see them in the photo after. Um, I just added the highlights after I had put the cards together for the Evil Queen as well as this Slimline card. My final card project is a 3D project using the book dies from the Sassy Club. I think this set is pretty darn cool. There's three different dies in the set. Well, three different die sets, I guess you could say. There's technically five dies. But anyways, I die cut my book page, the actual box of the book card die set out of some kind of off-white cream colored cardstock and then I trimmed the background piece that's going to go behind my opening on the inside of the box out of some mixed media cardstock and I also die cut the clouds from the book card die set out of the same mixed media cardstock because I'm going to do some distress blending with distress oxides to create my kind of ever after scene and the colors that I'm using for my sky are kitsch flamingo, saltwater taffy, dried marigold, and squeezed lemonade. And when I was watching the end of this movie to get the colors for this scene, did anyone else get the like vibe that this princess actually died? Because why is the castle like completely in clouds? Like there's clouds behind it and there's clouds under it kind of weird I don't know is that a theory am I just do I need to do like a fan theory on this movie <laughs> go on a deep dive but I found that was really interesting but anyway <laughs> I'm using my cloud stencil also from the sassy club 
And I'm using my waffle flower mat to help keep my cardstock and my stencils in place while I ink blend. And I'm starting with yellow and orange at the top of my clouds and I'm gonna move into pink. So every time I lay down some color, I lift my cloud stencil back up and I clean it off and I bring it down and shift it so that way I don't have the same cloud design repeating with each layer. I also put down the castle from the wizard school stencil. Um, again, it's a castle die that is the school for this particular fandom, but I thought it would be perfect for any castle. So I'm using that to mask while I do my clouds. And again, I'm going from that yellow and orange and I'm moving into saltwater taffy and finally my more pink color, which is kitsch flamingo. So now that my clouds are done, I'm going to peel off my castle stencil. And for this one, I'm going to do it in lost shadow, but I'm only going to do lost shadow on the bottom and add, kind of blend it out as I get to the top of the castle. So the top of the castle will still be be that white color of my cardstock. So the stencil set comes with the positive and negative of the castle. So I'm using the other side now. And again, starting with lost shadow and I'm putting more of the color at the bottom of the castle and then blending upward so it kind of fades into white at the top. I think it looks really cool. I'm loving how this is turning out so far. I also wanted to add a little bit of metallic splatter. So I'm going to add water to my white metallic water color this time and splatter that on my cloud and castle and then I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'm going to add the exact same colors to my cloud die cut here so this is one of the little I call them shelves when I build box cards um, this is one of the dies that you get with the book die set and again I'm just going from the same color so yellow and then orange moving into that saltwater taffy which is one of my favorite colors to blend between pink and orange and then the kitsch flamingo pink and I will also add a little bit of splatter. I'm going to cover all my Distress Oxides this time. I was being lazy and didn't cover them. But now that I'm done, I want to make sure I don't get any watercolor ink on my ink pads. So splattering a little bit more on that cloudy piece. And then I'm going to pick up. It took me a while to clean up there. So I just fast forwarded so you didn't have to clean up with me. And while those pieces are drying, I'm going to work on assembling the box a little bit more. So this is the book insides of the box die so I am folding this with my scoring tool just to help really get some nice creases there is also the book cover part that I die cut out of some blue cardstock and I die cut that twice so I have a front cover and a back cover for this project and then like I said there's seam pieces for the book card die, um, kind of a, a taller wavy hill, which I used here with green card stock, a smaller wavy hill, which I did not use for this project, and then the clouds, which you saw just a couple seconds ago. So now my background is dry, pretty much. I did a little tap of a towel just in case, and I trimmed this to be about a quarter of an inch larger than the opening of the book die. So I glued that to the center of the inside. Of my book die so this will be inside that little rectangle opening on the right and it will be the background of my scene next I'm going to take the clouds because that's my second level so this is my first little shelf even though I'm not going to glue anything to it um, this will be just in front of the castle again I tried to style it after the movie and I I really think this castle is in the sky I'm a little worried for our princess here <laughs> And then I am taking my green hills and I'm going to attach that as the front shelf. And I will glue the prints to this level. Um, so I guess it is kind of a shelf for this particular project. But if you've watched any of my other box card videos, I like calling them shelves. I don't know why. It's just because we put things on them. So it's a shelf. And I was, like I said, going to do trees in the background because in my head I imagined her like going off in this foresty scene. But when I was watching it, I was like, there are no trees. There's just clouds. So I went ahead and put those tree dyes and stencils away. 
I attached the shelves to the inside of my box so it's going to be that skinnier piece in between my background and the opening and now I have some adhesive on the other side of those shelf pieces and I'm folding it over closed to pick up and glue them in. If you have any particular questions about box cards if this was confusing to you let me know in the comments. Um, I can do a more slow down version of just assembling the box card in the future. I know a lot of my viewers tend to already have some experience with box cards, but I don't want to discourage anyone who hasn't tried this box uh, book die set from the Sassy Club. So just let me know in the comments. I can do either the same card and just do this scene a little slower or another card. But just let me know. I hope it wasn't too confusing. And if anything, if my videos are too fast, you can just put me on mute and then slow down the speed of the video. Uh, YouTube lets you adjust how fast you watch videos. Um, so you can also do that. Then you don't have to listen to me, but you can watch my videos a little more slowed down. Okay, so now let me recap. I folded my box together. My shelf pieces are glued to the smaller sides on the inside of my scene. I glued the back cover onto my book. So I put adhesive on the small spine tab as well as the large book cover tab, but I did not put any glue in the seam, just on the skinny and wider parts of the book cover because I didn't want my seam to restrict my box car from being able to fold flat. Now for the front cover, I'm adding a little bit of fun details. I have some red um, princess pattern as the spine and that is also from the six by six uh, bejeweled paper pad. And then I die cut the letters S and W out of the same paper pad, which are these really pretty yellow stripes. And I was gonna put them next to each other, but they didn't fit. So they're gonna stack on top of each other like that. And I am going to finish it off with actually an apple, but I'm going to add that a little later. I wanted to put my, um, I almost said critters, but they're not critters, my enchanted couple inside my box car before I glue it together. So here I am adding my highlights real quick. And I glued my prints to the green on the inside because it's kind of like the Barbie movie. He's just Ken. And our focus is here on our princess. So she's gonna be outside of the box. So I'm adding some adhesive just where she kind of um, touches the side and bottom of my box seam. So you'll see here again how I'm adding glue to the smaller thin panel. I'm not putting it in the crease. I got a little close, but I'm not putting it in the crease. And I am not adding glue to the cover this time. So that way my card receiver can open it. That'd be sad if I glued it closed. Um, and it looks like a cute little book with a cute little storybook scene inside. This die is so cool. And I did stamp and cut out this cute little bird. So adding him to the corner on the inside of the card, it's looking really cute. But like I said, the front cover was missing something. So I'm just gonna show you real quick how I stamp and color. So for this little tiny apple stamp, I just went ahead and grabbed my Sassy Club Onyx ink and a little clear block because I knew I could apply enough pressure to get it to stamp fine. And then quickly grabbing some of my Oh Hoo Hoo Art Honolulu B markers. Um, most of them are B. I have a couple A's, but mostly B. And I colored on my leaf and my stem with one color because it's so tiny. And then I just did a two color combination for the apple. Now I did use my scan and cut for all of my images, but I wasn't about to bust it out again for this tiny little apple. So I'm just grabbing my favorite scissors for fussy cutting and trimming around the apple. The best way to fussy cut is to move the paper and keep your uh, scissors still. So that I just find that to be the easiest way to make sure you're getting a nice clean cut and able to kind of turn your paper and go with the cutting. Um, I added some wet glue and then used my jewel picker to just pop that right into place. So here is a final look at this cute little storybook die again with my scene of a happy ending, I hope. And here's one more look at my um, seven friends here at their day job of mining. And then our evil queen and her hag alter ego. Um, all three cards. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
I hope it wasn't too confusing or if I didn't explain something well enough, let me know below. I'm here to encourage you to use your supplies and encourage you to check out Sassy Club today. Um, here are some final photos of my box storybook card. I really love it. It turned out so cute. And then one more quick little look at all three cards. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.